Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series. Today, I have two colleagues with me. We're going to be talking about SAP HANA. Uh, so, Eric and Sebastian, could you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves real quick? Sure. So, I'm Eric Riga. I am yeah part of the SAP Alliances team from VMware or Broadcom now, and um, yeah, taking care of all the validations, also writing down the best practices, um, writing some of the blogs. And hello, my name is Sebastian Lenz. I'm in the performance uh, team from VMware at Broadcom. And I'm working with Eric on the certifications and everything which is around SAP. Yeah, so I worked with both of these guys really closely for years. I was a part of the SAP HANA uh, team here at, at VMware. Do you guys ready to just go ahead and jump into it? Absolutely. Actually, Todd was part of the team um, when we all started this journey. So actually, I wanted to show this kind of monster VM story we had, because at the time when really Todd started, um, actually with me to back 2011, 2012, we had the idea of a monster VM with a one terabyte large size and 64 vCPs. So 10 years ago, we got the SAP production support for ACP HANA on a monster, monster VM with one terabyte. It was monster at the time, Eric. It really was. It was monster at the time. And it's still a monster, but the monster grow, grow bigger. And if you just look at this here, I have here the red one. Um, the red, uh, basically, it's the ACP HANA supported sizes, and the white on top of it is what would be possible on the vSphere side. Now we are actually at the vSphere 8 um, yeah, version. We have now 768 vCPUs and 24 terabyte on the vSphere side supported. And we have 12 terabytes um, on the ACP HANA side with 448 vCPUs. Why the difference? It's quite easy to, to, to explain. It's ACP HANA is only supporting what is possible on the hardware side. And we are currently limited, currently limited on eight socket um, hardware. So you see how we grow over the time. Actually, it's 12 times more. So we grow over the time 12 times. So that's, that's the evolution we had or went through um, with our Monster VM store. So with this, just to give you an idea how we see now SAP HANA in, in the full VMware branch or VMware Broadcom branch, the full VCF Cloud Foundation stack, which starts with the management domain, and then we have workload domains. The workload domains we have now for SAP HANA, for the NetWeaver stack maybe, or we have a mixed environment where everything runs together. And everything runs on our computer utilization, storage utilization, vSAN, but actually it doesn't have to be vSAN. We can use still use any, any storage we want. And then we have the network uh, utilization. Um, and then we have our additional operational tools, um, ARIA, management, operation, optimization. Then we have our cloud uh, adapter still running um, where if somebody wants to have it. And the full stack ACP is supported with the ACP applications. So this is really cool. It, it shows uh, SAP in the context of the new VCF terminology and all the pieces, how it all fits together in, in the bigger picture. So I, I really appreciate this slide. Thanks. OK, I see. So now we are talking about really what we do in the respects of performance. And um, it's quite interesting to see, since we evolved in the uh, Monster VM context, uh, what we are capable to do now already with virtualization and especially in the context of new CPUs, how they also involve, evolve further and we can still support them with the full performance they have underneath the bare metal configuration. Just an example is here, as you can see on the side, and it looks, let's say, quite interesting to see that we have an eight socket system, but the eight socket system is on the left side um, here in red with a query performance of 5,257 queries. Um, this is achieved with the so-called BWH, um, Business Warehousing Benchmark from SAP, which is an official benchmark from SAP. And we compare it against um, a Sapphire Rapids CPU, which is only in quotation marks for socket, but has a higher density of CPUs per socket. And as you can see here is with the same amount of memory, a four socket system can beat an older eight socket system possible in a virtual environment without a big performance impact. The physical benchmarks, which we have to do to compare to our virtual benchmarks and to be into 10% of the bare metal systems with our virtual um, configuration. And that I find quite interesting to see that we really can keep up. So we are not talking only about that we can support these higher numbers of core counts or memory, 
that we also give up the performance so we stay in the range of a bare metal system yeah so this is a really cool uh, uh, comparison with the eight socket versus the four socket so the, the eight socket is previous generation uh it's got a total of 224 yeah and the four socket has 240 so it's a similar number of cores, uh, but, but each of those cores is also a little bit more powerful, right? Because it's the newer yeah, generation. Yeah, as, as you can see here, it's at seven percent more threats. Ah, uh, yeah, more cores, the, the and we we gain thirty five percent more throughput with these additional um, threats. So yeah, the, the, they are more powerful. Yeah, this is just hot off the press. Um, we have now a comparison about an Emerald Rapid system against the before Sapphire Rapids platform. The cool thing, I mean, it is a two socket um, system. You have to keep in mind really two sockets. But the configuration here was that we switched the CPUs and the memory out, but the board and everything around it was the same. So we just, in quotation marks, used new CPUs and newer memory. Um, and as you can see here, we're going up now from 240 CPU threads, 120 cores, to 256 CPU threads, um, 128 cores from a new ML Rapids system to a new DDR5 memory. Okay, that is that is hopefully better. Um, so we have 6.7% more threads, but we increase the performance in this benchmark again to 13.4%. And again, our hypervisor itself is providing, yeah, let's say uh, good numbers. Uh, and when we compare it against the bare metal results of these both platforms, we are really, um, I think we are under 5% performance deviation. Again, very good results. Um, we have really three phases here, if, if somebody's interested. Um, it's like the first is data load, which is involving storage. This is the phase one. And then we have the throughput, which is basically CPU. And then we go over to networking, which is also like a third part, which is tested. There is nearly no deviation compared to bare metal. Yeah, so it's really good to see that even with the newer platforms and these larger size VMs, uh, we're still achieving performance uh, very close to bare metal, as you guys mentioned. Absolutely, absolutely. As we see in the next slide, it's just amazing. So what we can achieve on one side through the new platforms, keep in mind these are two socket platforms with uh, now four terabyte of memory. That is something which is, would be astonishing uh, five years ago. And in addition, what we will see is also the number of users which can be then parallelly run on these platforms is really good. So this is um, another test tool we use, which is more leaning into the S4 realm. So having OLAP and OLTP. So that's um, mixed of SAP loads, which we also uh, use for our certification efforts. And this is like, um, you really have to look at the systems which are notated underneath in the, in the graph. To, to get a better, let's say, a better feeling about what, what this means. So when, when you look far on the left side, like we started with a four socket Intel Broadway system, which was top of the notch at the time. And we could accommodate 35,000 users simultaneously running data. And then we go up to a two socket ice lake, right? Four socket Broadway to a two socket ice lake. And it increased to 40,000 users. Throughput also going up like nearly doubled hypervisor so that is also we have to keep in mind for all this test we have to be in 10 percent of bare metal these are the virtual numbers so bare metal is not far off to what we see here it's not that much better we can keep up we can keep up with the new cpus we can keep up with with more of everything right memory uh, storage everything we can keep up and maintain the performance and then go to an eight socket cascade lake which was top of the notch at that time eighty-five thousand users and then lesser users, but a two socket Sapphire Rapid, right? We're going from eight socket Cascade, two socket Sapphire Rapid. Then next step, the Cooper Lake system, eight socket. So when you look at it now for the eight socket Cascade Lake, which can be then co um, compared to the Cooper Lake, another increase from 7.7 .7 to 9.7 million. And then we go from eight socket again to four socket, what we saw before on the BWH, and now here in the mixed workload, where we see 110,000 users concurrently running on the database. And we get 11 point, let's say 11.4 million throughput. Yeah, this is such a cool chart, because you see, you know, generationally across 
the server uh, versions, how performance just scales up and and uh, vSphere as a platform has been able to uh, scale along with that. Um, so really, really good uh, performance data. Yeah, and it is, I mean, it is sometimes a bit tricky for all these tests because you have so much things which may change or may not change. Like, okay, you have CPU change, subsystem change, maybe storage change. Um, and then, but you always compare it against bare metal. That is what we do. We have a bare metal baseline and then we compare it against the virtualized system. And when we find something which helps the virtualized system, it goes into our best practices. Well, guys, this has been a really great uh, update and highlight over the great performance we were able to achieve with SAP HANA. Thank you. Thank you for having us here and presenting what we could do. And I'd like to thank everybody else for also watching this episode. And I look forward to seeing everyone on another episode of the Extreme Performance Series soon. Thank you.